Welcome to my thoughts on the 1990s animated X-Men show season thoughts on season 2 episode 13 called Reunion Part 2 and the season 3 episode 1 episode called Out of the Past Part 1. So Another two episodes I absolutely love. Uh, spoilers for these two episodes and the ones that have aired before them. Please support the SAC After Strike. It's an extremely important strike. It deserves your support. There's a link in the description box to donate and some links to videos that help explain why it's such an important strike. And let's dive in. Season 2, Episode 13, Reunion Part 2. So, yeah, the X Men arrive and realize. As we already knew, they have no powers in the Savage Land, and Storm makes a comment about, I do not need the powers of the elements to deal with a toad, which that does mean that we don't have to listen to that horrible line. Let's see, and... Great arrival for, for Wolverine. He really makes an entrance. And let's see. Vertigo manages to, to ah, what's the word? Wait, no, the yeah, the, the big entrance he makes is later in the episode. Anyway, yeah, she's the only real threat to him. Like he easily takes out the others. Because the thing is he doesn't really need his mutant powers. He's really, really effective without. Let's see. And Wolverine fights a dinosaur. Absolutely love it. And Kazar and Wolverine have the classic comic book two good guys meet and fight because of a misunderstanding only to become allies. And yeah, they're, they're a good matchup. You know, they both have similar like skill sets so it's it is that kind of thing where like if they meet and they don't fight you're like wondering who'd win though and let's see and yeah, right when when uh, mr sinister uses the the machine on magneto there's more very Terminator-y score. Really love to hear it. And yeah, 100%. Someone working on this show is like a fan of the original Terminator. And, you know, now that their powers have been disabled, you know, Gambit tells Roke he loves her and kisses her without any problem you know they've been building towards this he kissed her once before but got knocked out you know and you know it's the kind of thing where like if she wasn't also a strong woman if this wasn't a show packed with strong women i'd be like come on really romance that's the only thing but you know they like you respect rogue she's not like if like there's a lot of female characters that were encouraged to not really respect because the idea of a woman just wanting a man is seen as like negative, but yeah, they they handled it well here. And Wolverine makes his excellent entrance, and they manage to destroy the machine. And yeah, Xavier manages to. I I love that Mister Sinister is so used to being able to control, so he uses the the he activates the thing that gets Morph, you know, yeah, encourages Morph to, to attack Xavier, but because Xavier operates from a place of empathy, he's able to remind Morph, you know, we, we're family. So Morph a a actually attacks Mr. Sinister instead, you know, so it's, it's a great... And also note, Xavier has his psychic powers back. He could try using mind control himself, but that's not how he fights, you know, so it's great, uh, yeah. And they manage to, to 
you know, sh like Mr. Sinister, you know, becomes like particles and start then starts to reform, but Jean like throws him far away and says, you know, it'll be a while before it reforms. And it's like the thing of, you know, yeah, they have more stories they want to tell with Mr. Sinister. They don't want this to be the final. And you can be like, was it really the smartest? Couldn't you have, like, trapped him or something? They still had to finish off the fight. Like, the, the you know, Sauron was still around, at the very least. Let's see. And, yeah, and, at, you know, and they helped rebuild the, you know, Kazar and... The the yeah the the village that Kazar has with I can't believe I'm blanking on her name but but yeah um also great that she did the you know he he cued her and she did the guard distract and yeah let's see and which which again you know if the guard had taken her seriously as a threat he wouldn't have been fooled by that but he sees an you know he sees a woman in a 10,000 let's see 10,000 BC something you know fur bikini and and yeah he's like oh you know no threat there so uh, you know and the but but yeah and and at the very end you know it, Sauron is like this is you know now it's my time you know and at the very end, you know, Mr. Sinister reforms and does a sinister chuckle with that awesome voice of his. So, you know, again, that's very, very T-1000, and it's the kind of thing of, you know, that's how determined he is. Like, yeah, he got spread pretty far apart, but with enough time, he reforms. That brings us to episode season three, episode one, out of the past, part one. Yeah, kind of awkward video here, doing a part two of when I did what I did part one already, and a part one where I'm not doing the part two yet. But here we are, Lady Deathstrike. So glad to see her. One of my favorite, you know, obviously Wolverine antagonists, but just in general Marvel antagonists. So cool. And they, uh, let's see, yeah, and, and she and the others beat the Morlocks and reach the alien ship, and, you know, she activates it, and Xavier picks up on the intense power, and, you know, ah, we will need a human with adamantium claws, and, you know, immediately the audience, ah, Wolverine. And, you know, at first, Wolverine is like, oh, these Morlocks again, really? But then Leech says, Yuriku is waiting for you. And it's like, oh, you know, so it's, it's a great, you know, because there's a lot, of, a lot of people and causes where Wolverine is like, this again, really? But there's a couple of people, number of them women, you know, you mention them, then he gets motivated. You know, he is very protective of the the women that, uh, yeah. And I just realized, technically in this show, in this continuity, Wolverine did not get mind, you know, did not lose his memories from the, the Weapon X experiments. That's, that's a choice. I mean, I guess... Yeah, I mean, certainly, if you do that, it does limit the story. Then he's always rediscovering his memories. I guess that's they didn't want to do that. It just it feels very weird. Like that seems like a very central element. I mean, at least he does still have the um, berserker rage. Let's see, and and yeah, you know, the the others are like Yuriko, who's that? And he's like, just somebody that I used to know. And she cut me off. Anyway, um, right, and the, you know, game of basketball and Wolverine kind of cheats, like, really? This good, you know, but, yeah. And Gambit and Wolverine, I see they managed to get their shirts off. Really oiled up, too. Like, someone definitely wanted a couple of cheesecake shots. That's, you know, fair enough. Let's see. See, and and yeah, we get the the flashback, and they, you know, we see right before and right after 
I don't know that they needed to reuse the entire clip of him, you know, weapon xing out, but okay. And yeah, you know, he comes back and Yuriko is gone. And I love that they do actually name drop, those are the Reavers, you know, the, like the moment that I heard, you know, oh, they're, you know, cyborgs in X, but, you know, ah, uh, Reavers, right? You know, that's, that's my first thought, so, yeah. Let's see, and especially, you know, like, one of them is, like, has, like, tank treads as a lower body, you know, yeah, that's, that's Reavers. And, yeah, we, we see that, you know, yeah, Yuriko gives her backstory, you know, she became a cyborg so that her outer shell would reflect the darkness inside. Now she wants revenge for murder, and, yeah, the professor, Professor Yuriko, was act uh, uh, Oyama was you know and and yeah a lot of this is right out of the comics you know her father created the the bonding process and but yeah in the comics I'm almost certain he does actually kill the professor but I guess they felt that was too dark and and Wolverine does try to say I didn't kill him I guess maybe they're gonna have it that he you know if I recall like in the comic I think it was in Berserker Rage you know so it's not like cold-blooded or anything, but they maybe did feel like that's going too far for a kid's show. Let's see, but but yeah, and Gambit and, and Jubilee managed to, you know, first they, they sneak up, I, I like how, you know, Gambit uses his power to light up the, the tunnel, but yeah, they, they get to the, the uh, get to the Reavers, fight them some and we open on a to be continued as the ship starts to to open and yeah very very cool i i have an idea about who these aliens are but i i will talk about that in the very next video i think that might be everything i have to say about these two episodes let's see as usual good action good use of power really, yeah, so Reunion Part 2, great way to finish off Season 2, you know, finally the X-Men catch up with Xavier, finally they go to the Savage Land, and they're fighting enemies that we, the audience, have already met, including Sauron, they're, you know, dealing with, like, yeah, they're dealing with the lack of powers, which, you know, again, we, the audience, were clued into, I guess, the first episode of Season 2, I believe, and, uh, you know, yeah, as usual, very cool when Magneto, he's one of those villains that he works really well as a villain, but he also works really well as the sort of anti-hero, you know, helping out the X-Men at least as long as it also works for him kind of thing. The, the, confu the, the mis uh, misunderstanding between Kazar and Wolverine makes some sense since Kazar is used to mutants on, in the Savage Land being enslavers, not good guys. Um, little funny that, like, you know, I, th I think it's Brainchild who, like, you know, like, pulls the lever, shuts the door, and, like, Kazar and all the others just stood right outside the gate that whole time. Like, they don't... I mean, I guess maybe there wasn't another way in, but it just... I don't know, it's just kind of funny that they did nothing for all that time. Just like, eventually they opened the, the X-Men opened the door, and they were just standing there, just waiting. Just, I don't know, I guess that's not, it's not their name, and the, you know, the show isn't called Kazar and Friends, and, just, and the rest. And the, um, let's see... Yeah, season three hits the ground running as you know seasons one and two did, with this uh, you know really capable enemy of the Reavers and some cool backstory and you know as usual for Wolverine backstory, there's, it's tragedy. You know, dude can't catch a break. It's, uh, even even in this animated show, his backstory is tragic. I suppose that covers...
so so yeah you know as usual they take stuff from the comics they you know some of it they change around a little you know I but but yeah they get the most of the like core stuff the stuff that we as comic readers really want to see animated most of that they do put right up there on on the screen so I think yeah that's everything that I had to say about these two episodes so catch you again tomorrow make my marvel